Hey, well, my name is Andrew Wenzel. I'm the winemaker here at Abacella Winery in Roseburg, Oregon. I've been here since uh, just before the crush of 2003. Um, I have a biology chemistry degree from Eastern Oregon University. I was going to be a veterinarian. I have cat dander allergies that I didn't know about in the beginning. Yeah. So I decided that I wanted to make wine. And I worked at King Estate in 2001. I worked at Sylvan Ridge in 2002. And then I put out resumes all around the state of Oregon. And uh, I liked what Abacella had to offer. I, I liked uh, Earl and the way he ran the operation very scientifically and at the same time a lot of experimentation which I'm very much into and uh, the rest is history. I started out as a uh, cellar master, head enologist, uh, became assistant winemaker and then just before the crush of 2008 I got promoted to head winemaker so this is my second crush now. Hmm. Talk about your relationship with Alex and the synergy between winemaker and and viticulturalist and and oh, uh, that, that's a great question um, I'm up on the crush pad most of the time I do make it out into the vineyard I try to do it every single day during crush so I can evaluate the fruit before it comes off the vine so if we want to make a decision not to pick we can make it there but I wouldn't be able to do it without Earl and Alex it would just be too much to handle uh, he he takes care of the growing side of it, the watering side of it, and, and brings the cluster samples in. We, we taste them all together, and, and it's a group decision for the, for the picking. I think any one of us could, uh, could say, I don't think this is ready, and then we would sit down and have like a round table discussion. And, um, you know, why wouldn't we pick it? Why would we pick it? And if, if it's a valid point, then, then it won't get picked, or it will get picked based upon those decisions. Uh, Alex is a great guy. He's a beaver. Uh, I was born in Eugene, so I'm an Oregon duck. So we always haze each other a little bit. In fact, the duck game is tomorrow, so that should be fun. But but there's no animosity involved there. We we, we get along very well. Now it's, this is uh, the evening of October 9th. What mm -hmm. uh, what have you harvested? What have you crushed? And what's still on the horizon here? Well, we started crush of 2009 with a grape called Bastardo which is part of our port program and in fact we just pressed it last night and and muted it with the mutage with the spirits um, after that came Albarino and the Albarino is actually in this block right here behind us that's kind of sloping away from us uh, picked it at uh, the exact bricks that we wanted to make about a 13 percent alcohol wine. It is fermenting in the tank right now at about 54 degrees. Uh, after that the Tempranillo started coming off the vine. Tempranillo tends to be one of our earlier ripeners. So we have the luxury of driving around and hitting all the different blocks and seeing which one gets the ripest. And in this case this year our uh, clone of Tempranillo from Duero was the first to come in. And it is actively fermenting right now and in fact it's almost dry. We're going to be dumping it tomorrow and letting it macerate for a couple more days. After that we brought in some of our Southeast Block Tempranillo Clone 1 which is actively fermenting right now which um, it always goes into our Tempranillo Estate program sometimes into our reserve program when the vintage dictates it. We brought in a little bit of uh, some experimental clones Tinta de Toro which is tasting very good right now and some Malbec. At this point we've picked Syrahs, a lot of Syrahs off of this block right behind the wind machine up on South Face. South Face Syrah came in. We'll be inoculating that tomorrow. So it's it's been a great crush so far. It's It's been a little bit, uh, well it's been a fast paced crush I think is the way I would put it. Once it started, you know, we, we, we delayed it by probably about a week which surprised us because with the heat summation units we expected to be picking it second to third week of September and we ended up picking it, starting picking at the end of September. So by delaying a couple weeks you have to bring in the fruit a little bit quicker. So we've been crushing 10-15 tons a day and in fact today we did almost 18 tons which is not a record here but it, but is a very very good day for the crush pad. Having your your own estate fruit allows you to not only choose the time you pick it and and what parts you want to pick it if you don't want to pick the whole block but it also gives you a true sense of provenance, a sense of place. And I was talking to you about that earlier. I can go to any fermenter 
and it's rows 9 through 14 on the upper part of the slope or rows 10 through 12 on the middle part of the slope and we can walk out into the vineyard of that block and basically look at the vines and know exactly where that came from and we do very good record keeping so if we make a, a spectacular wine we can backtrack our information and, and try and figure out what caused uh, the, the wine to be so beautiful. Now the uh, I imagine it must be pretty special to uh, work alongside Earl and uh, and ima imagine a fair amount of pressure goes along with that too because he's established an international reputation for what's happened here. Yes that, that is correct you know we are on an international stage um, we're, we're not just Umpqua Valley and uh, you know people in Spain know about us and down in California you know we're, we're some of the pioneers for Tempranillo and with that comes a lot of responsibility you know there, we, we set high standards of, for ourselves high quality standards and we, we hold ourselves to them you know there's nobody pushing us to do that except for ourselves and when I bring my crush staff in I reiterate that where it's very easy to forget how special Abacella is, how special Fault Line Vineyards is. Talk about the port program here, port style I should say. Uh, yeah, we call it port style because uh, we're actually grandfathered in so we can still call it port. But we use all traditional Portuguese grapes. Uh, we used Tempranillo, which in Portugal they call Tinta Rorish, uh, Bastardo, which I talked about earlier, Tinta Cao, Tinta Amarilla, and Terriga Nacional. Uh, we pick them at the peak of ripeness, we don't want to get any overripe flavors, so it's usually anywhere from 23 to 25 bricks. Uh, we start the fermentation after the cold soak, and at about 11 bricks, we uh, use uh, estate made spirits um, to, to do the mutage. Uh, then we put it in a tank to let it settle out, and then we age it in 100% neutral oak barrels because we don't want to get oaky flavors in our port. We wanted the, the bright fruit and those perfumey aromatics to shine through. And uh, port is a true labor of love. It's uh, a lot of fun and uh, you know we always have this joke that just like labor, child labor, that, that's how port is. And it always seems to want to birth itself at about two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and I'm a little tired right now because we birthed our last night at about 1.30 and then, of course, you know, crush starts the next morning at 7 a.m. and you got to get up. So I'm on like about three hours of sleep and on a nice caffeine high right now. <laughs>